Pedro from EMP Reacts. I'm here today with Molly of Living Dead Girl to talk about exorcism out June 11th. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm great, I'm great. Thank you for taking the time to talk about yourself, the band, the record. And perhaps let's start from the beginning. What what gave birth to Living Dead Girl? Uh, what gave birth to Living Dead Girl would be my lifelong passion of music, performing, anything creative that, like any way I can express myself, I'm obsessed with. I've always just been a really artistic person. So Living Dead Girl is just a way for me to use all of the creativity I have and to perform. When you sat down to put this this record together, did, did you have a goal in mind? Was, was there something in the back of your mind that was the driving force that you, that you wanted to achieve with this debut record? Uh, the goal of the debut record, it was really to create something that I felt like was the perfect, perfect example of like my personality. And I feel like we did really nail that with exorcism. I wanted something that I have fun performing, something that really engages a crowd, something that when I'm performing it, I'm really passionate and into it. So I really wanted our music to have a personal, to strike like a personal chord with me and to have like a very fun, upbeat energy. And I do feel like we did achieve that with the album. It's it's uh, interesting that you mentioned personal because I, I felt that in the lyrical content of the record, there was definitely a personal touch. There was some not very subliminal messages, let's put it that way, uh, with the lyrical content of the album. Uh, was that a little bit uh, of you exposing yourself, who you are as an individual, but not only as an artist in, in the lyrical content of this album? Yeah, it absolutely was. I find when I'm writing music, like I'll just, like I'm already a really blunt, honest person with not much filter, but when I'm writing music, like I just like don't hold back. I'm like, if this is what I'm thinking, then that's exactly what I'm going to say. Yeah, I, I felt like it came across. Were you a little bit concerned? Because we live in a world where, where everybody's overanalyzing everything else that everybody else is doing. So sometimes mm -hmm. being a little bit blunt and being a little bit honest could work as a disservice, I guess. And, and artists these days, I find that they're always a little bit concerned with their image. Uh, did you worry about it or this is like who you are, take it or leave it? I'd say a bit of both. Like you definitely have to be mindful. Like you don't want to, I mean, you don't want to be like too much of anything really, because like you said, like people are really concerned about that nowadays. But at the same time, I'm just like, this is my music. This is my self-expression. It's personal. It's based on personal experiences. And like, if you don't like it, then don't listen to it. <laughs> How is the creative process behind the band? How was the creative process going into making this debut album? Uh, so the creative process comes to me absolutely out of nowhere. I find if I sit down and tell myself, okay, let's write a song now, nothing will come to me. Like if I'm trying to force it, like then, I, then I'm not inspired. But usually when things come to me is when I'm involved doing something else. Like when I'm busy doing something completely unrelated is when I have to pull my phone out quickly to write lyrics or when I suddenly have an idea for a video or anything. It's usually things just pop up in my mind all the time. So I'm always just like taking notes, writing things down on like napkins or receipts or on my phone like things just come to me randomly when i'm not even trying to think of stuff that's perhaps the best way versus forcing yourself to sit down and really work on something then it doesn't For feel sure, like yeah. i just don't think oh. it's natural right yeah no if you're trying to force it then it's like not authentic this this record to me felt like it was listening to the songs from beginning to end. I, I feel like there's a little bit of a journey in it in, in not just a journey through the stories that you're telling, but a journey through the creation of the record itself. What time span are we looking at when you look at, at the songs that you put on this debut album? When, when did you start working on it and when did you finish? I think the oldest song on it is I actually wrote Poltergeist or at least the first draft of it when I was like 16 or 17. So that was about five years ago, five or six years ago. How old am I now? Uh, that was about five years ago. I wrote Poltergeist. I wrote Exorcism like four years ago. But like when I say I wrote them, I mean, I wrote like the first version of them. They obviously changed a lot between being just notes in my phone to being an actual finished product. But um, yeah, these songs have been, some of the songs have been around like in my head at least for like four or five years. And some of them I wrote in the studio when I went to record. So there definitely is like a journey in it. Some of the songs I wrote in high school and some of the songs I wrote last year. <laughs> do, do you attribute a little bit of that to the diversity, to the eclectic nature of the record? Yeah, like you can kind of hear how my style's changed even in the album, like even like the song Worship Me. Um, I wrote that when I was 18 and that one's obviously like the heaviest song on the album. And you can kind of see how I went from like that level of heaviness to 
like a more melodic sound. Like you can see how I've changed over the years, like even in just the one album. What was the most challenging aspect for you uh, putting this album together? Uh, the most challenging aspect <laughs> was, I'm just gonna say just making it happen. Um, like I've always, I've always got ideas, I'm creative. I could go into a studio anytime, any day and just like make an album but like the logistics and the business part of it behind the scenes since we're an independent band everything's self-funded so like I was waitressing like 50 hours a week saving up money to like be able to afford to go to LA and pay a producer and pay for mastering and like every single thing that Living Dead Girl has done like I paid for out of my own pocket like we don't have a label we don't get government artist grants like anything like that so I'd say the hardest part has just been like the other work that I've had to do in order to make this happen does that make more pressure on you for, 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 for the album to be successful and, and for you to be able to continue to make the music that you love to make? It does in a sense. Yeah. Because like when you put such a huge investment into something, like I really look at living dead girl as like starting a business. Like I don't see my band as any different than like owning a small business really at this point. Um, but when you put in huge investment into something, obviously there's like a lot of pressure. You want it to be successful. You want to make your money back. But um, once like we, started selling like lots of merch and CDs and vinyls and stuff. Like I felt a little more reassured. I was like, okay, we're gonna be fine. Like I'm making it back, it's fine now. You, you felt a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, I was like, oh, thank God people are actually paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the hole that you dig yourself in was not as deep as you thought it was. It, it was pretty deep, but luckily I think we're able to recover from it because we do have a lot of um, different merch options on our website. And I know a lot of people have like commented on that like it's cool that you sell not just like t-shirts but you sell like we sell like panties and hats and like all kinds of different things so i think being creative with our merch has really helped us in a lot of ways oh, especially in a timeline now where you can't really perform i mean you're not going to be able to uh to currently do like an album release party or anything of, along those lines so thinking a little bit outside the box is really necessary specifically for a band like living dead girl mm -hmm. Does that allow you to be creative, not just in the music that you create, but creative in the whole aspect that surrounds the band? Oh, 100%. Like I make, I made our website and I run that. I fulfill all the merch orders. I design the merch. I make the lyric videos. Like I get to use my, my creativity in a lot of other ways other than just singing and writing. And I love that about Living Dead Girl too. Like to me, it feels like a lot more than just like a band. It's like the whole thing is like a business or like my career, like I, I get to design clothes, I get to design a website, I get to make videos. It's like, I don't just do one thing. And that's what I love so much about it is that I get to do so many different things with it. Yeah, it, you're really allowed to put a lot of different hats on depending on, on what is needed. It, it, it's really incredible, all the work and everything that you've put in into the band, into the, into the debut uh, album. Uh, it, it really yeah. showcases how, how talented you are because it's not just the singing. I mean, it, it really is the full package. Thank you. So I, I just want to congratulate you on that because I think it's absolutely outstanding. Uh, listening yeah. to this record, we see the growth. At least I felt like I saw the growth, like we said, from some of the earlier songs to some of the more recent songs. And, mm -hmm. and that growth also allows you to change your style and change your influences that you have coming into the songs. Mm -hmm. So the question that I have for you is a question that I couldn't answer myself is how you define living dead girl as far as a genre goes do, do you want to be defined by a genre do you care i kind of don't care either way like you can just be generic with and say it's hard rock or it's metal or it's like new metal or modern metal like if you want to just kind of like put a blanket over it and just kind of cover it all but like if when you want to get like technical with it it's like it's kind of like metal pop punk industrial gothic modern like it's like there's like i can think of like a whole list of things. So it's kind of, it is kind of hard to label it because it is so many different things in one, but like, just to keep it simple, usually like when people ask what kind of music I do, I'm like, yeah, it's like hard rock, heavy metal kind of thing. <laughs> so like, yeah, I don't really, I don't really care if it fits into a genre. Like, I don't really care if it fits into a box. Like, you know, you get like the, the people who will be like, oh, this isn't really metal. And I'm like, well, metal is such a broad term at this point. Like there's so many different kinds of metal. So like, I don't, I don't really care if it fits into a stereotype or a category. Like it just, it's living dead girl. That's what it is. When you're looking now at what you have achieved with this debut record and you see your growth and all of these different influences, is there is there one sound that you start to now gravitate more towards versus the others? 
or this is something that you enjoy to not really have any boundaries and just kind of go where where the song asks you to go to? I definitely enjoy the versatility aspect of it. And I think that's one of my favorite things about what we have uh, done as a band and done on this record is that we've shown that we can do a bit of everything really. But the sound that I definitely um, am gravitating towards is the sound that we have in our songs like Exorcism, Villain, uh, Beautiful, where there's kind of a bit more of a pop punk influence in it. I'm definitely really leaning that way. I love, I love the contrast between the two vocal styles, like the really, really high feminine, almost kind of like a cheerleader chanting style vocals in contrast with the screams. Like I always have people asking me if we have two different vocalists, they assume the singing and the screaming are two different people. And that's what I love. Like I love being so versatile that people don't even think one person could do that at all. So I'm definitely really gravitating towards like the super heavy, but pop punk at the same time kind of songs, because I think it's just so unique and so different from any other band. It's funny that you mentioned your vocal versatility, because that's where I wanted to go next. I, I thought you were phenomenal in adapting to what the song called for. So it's not like you, it's not like you were a cookie cutter, like what you got in the first song is what you get all the way through to the last song. I felt like you morphed, you slightly changed depending on the influence that the track had, depending on the lyrical content. Like you, you always gave the song what, what the song needed vocally. And that to me was a really interesting aspect because I felt that perhaps being a debut record, you would try to feel as comfortable as possible. And by being comfortable, you try to stay within one lane. But, but you were swerving all over the place, but still keeping <laughs> control of the car. Where, where do you attribute to that, to that versatility that you have? I feel like that was, there was a couple things. It was, it was a way for me to experiment and see what I like and what I don't like. And like kind of just playing with it myself, like in the studio, seeing what I'm better at, because since it is a debut album, like I would, there's still like a lot of like self-discovery in it, like as an artist. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. And then I'll listen to both and see which I like better. But at the same time, it's like, I can do this. I can also do this. I can also do that. And I'm like, why limit it to one thing? I would get so bored doing the same thing in every single song. Like if I, if I had just sang one certain style or just screamed all the time, like I would get really bored. So I think it was also just like a way of me having fun with it is that I didn't put a limit on it or anything. Like I didn't stay within guidelines or stay within a box or anything i just was like okay this is what i'm doing this i'm sometimes i'm over here and sometimes i'm over there <laughs> you like it or you don't but i'm, I'm just gonna like go all out <laughs> is there one style or one approach within your vocal range that you feel more comfortable in and is there one that you feel like you have to perhaps work a little bit more at i definitely love singing songs like um exorcism and villain live where it's like kind of more on the like a bit more poppy those are really fun to sing live because they are so high energy like it's impossible to sing that kind of vocal and like not like be dancing with it and like having fun with it like those kind of songs are just so much fun to perform um the one vocal style that i want to like work on more is like in stronger like how it's like a lot of more falsetto is like even when we went to record that i was like oh i don't usually sing like this this is let's just do it because it'll be different but I kind of like to incorporate that more into some future songs just because like it's so different from the rest of the album that then when that song has its breakdown and it drops into like a heavier song like I just like once again like I love the contrast of it. Uh, was there a track on this album that kind of became a little bit of your nemesis even though you perhaps love the track but it just uh, and not give you any gray hair because I see you don't have any unlike me but uh, you know did it give you some extra troubles? Um. Hmm. I would probably say the uh, Give Up or Worship Me because those were songs that I had originally recorded with other producers like in the past. And I think it's actually harder to take an old song and rework it than it is to make a brand new one. Like it's so much easier to just go into a studio and just like come up with something from scratch than it is to take your old material and try to work with it. So when you're like reworking a song like that, like you change some of the lyrics, you change some of the arrangement, the instrumental, you change the tuning. Um, so that, that can be difficult because we've already played those songs live for like years and now we just slightly change it like we just like like go down a tuning like a step in the tuning um, and slightly change the lyrics here and there then when we go to perform it live I'm like getting the two different versions in my head like I'm like okay wait don't think about the old one just think about the new one so it is it is kind of harder with songs like give up and worship me because since I rewrote them it's like confusing when you go to sing them which one you're supposed to sing <laughs> 
is, is that uh, it's almost like you're reinventing the wheel, if you will, because mm. I, I feel like you're, you're in your mind, perhaps you could still hear the old version of the song. Is, is that where the problem mm. lies? You don't have like a clean sleigh. Yeah, like I'll remember the old lyrics and like I, I'll get up to like, like we'll be singing it like at band practice and I'll like get up to the part where I'm supposed to sing and I'm like, wait, what's the first line? I don't even remember the lyrics. <laughs> And now that you see the record coming uh, at, at a close distance, I mean, we were around the corner from the album release. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you already starting to look forward in terms of what the next step is for the band, what the next step is for yourself? I already have more studio time booked. So yes, I'm <laughs> like mentally, I'm like on our third album by now. <laughs> Since like, I, I finished recording Exorcism in February of 2020. So a year and a half ago. So like as much as I love it and I'm like still really excited about it, like it's still a really exciting thing to me. Like I'm not over it by any means, but like create creativity wise, like I'm already writing other albums. <laughs> one last question for you. Uh, what was the one thing that you feel like you've discovered about yourself that you didn't know during the record creation process of putting out Exorcism? Um, I'd say in the like recording and creation process, um, I think I was more creative and versatile than I expected myself to be like when I went in I kind of thought I don't know like this is just gonna be like kind of like like I don't know I kind of thought it was gonna turn out to be a bit more of like generic pop metal kind of and I I am kind of surprised at how experimental we really got like there were like when we were recording like like songs like exorcism stuff where like I'm sitting there telling the producer okay it's gonna be super heavy but then cheerleader vocals and he's like what like I, like when I told that idea to people before we had written it like so many people just like looked at me and were like but but why like like I'm just like really surprised at how risky I decided to go with it like how how much I decided like I ended up really pushing the whole experimental thing so I I really surprised myself in that way that I took the risks that I did because obviously creating music is a risk and especially when you want to do things that don't sound like other bands and are like totally new you're gonna it's gonna weird some people out of it so it is taking like a big step creatively to just be like this is it I'm doing something different it's kind of weird but I dig it <laughs> well I just want to say thank you for your time today chatting with me about this record I really enjoy the record and the fact that you were a fellow Canuck as myself was one of the reasons that actually drove me to checking out the album. And I was really pleased with what you put together on this record. It's a really fun album to listen to. And, and I really like some of those more industrial tracks that you have in there, because it adds a little bit of, of a different vibe. You, you, you become a little bit more darker in those songs. So hopefully we'll see that side of you in future records as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I love the like 90s, 2000s, like early 2000s era of like industrial music. So. Definitely want to play with that sound more too. <laughs> well, Molly, thank you very much for your time. All the best with the release on June 11th, Exorcism, Living Dead Girl. Go check it out. You're incredible on this record. Your vocals are outstanding. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye.